Are you new to fishing coho and Puget Sound? Or maybe just looking for a few tips to catch more fish? In this three-part seminar series I gave at the 2022 Western Washington Sportsman Show, I'm going to share my inside knowledge that I use to get my clients into more fish. If you like our videos, make sure and give us a thumbs up. Or subscribe and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified when we have new videos come out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. So let's get to the seminar. So you guys, my name is Doug St. Denis. I'm a full-time charter captain and sport fishing guide. And today, I'm gonna to share with you um, some success that, that I have and unabridged so you can be successful fishing for coho in Puget Sound. I've fished for coho throughout Puget Sound and I haven't changed my techniques from one area to another. This stuff works, okay? Um, and I'm probably gonna share a couple things with you you're gonna be surprised at, okay? But this is gonna be, if, if you're unfamiliar with it, you wanna get into Puget Sound Coho, um, from the resident coho to the ocean runs, this is, what I'm, this is the basic primer I'm using to get on top of coho consistently. And really and truly, what's the, how many of you just show hands? Because I, I, I really like to be interactive. I want you guys, let's have a discussion today. How many of you are fishing coho in Puget Sound? Okay, that's a good number. I like it. How many of you have a consistent network of people you can bounce information off of? Ooh, that's not as many hands. That's the only difference between how I fish for coho and how you fish. Because I'm out there every day. And who do you think I'm talking to? Every charter captain that was out there the previous days and even some friends of mine that are just sport anglers, but they're literally out there every day. That is the big difference between you and me. That's it. I bet we probably fish the same way some of the same setbacks. But let's get into that and I'll share some information with you. So today's outline, I'm gonna talk about equipment. Uh, now I'm gonna talk about the equipment I use, right? Probably what you're using, it's not wrong. And if you're not downrigger fishing, but you wanna get into it, uh, you don't have to buy what I've got. Maybe you buy what a friend's got, right? Or maybe you go get some entry level stuff. Um, but you're gonna need downriggers for sure, okay? So we'll talk about equipment rods, mainline, bait and lures. I'm gonna show you what I go through, uh, what helps me be successful to get fishing to the uh, boat for my clients. And then a little bit on area selection and, and really, uh, we'll get to it. I'll let you know when we get there. So let's talk about rods and reels first. So if you are not uh, used to fishing like this, you need downrigger rods. There's a huge difference between herring rods and downrigger rods. You need a rod that you can load up. And I mean, when I load them up, they're, they're touching, you know, and I high stick quite a bit, which means as the rod is in the rod holder, I like my butt to be a little more high than most, but I've really got that tip bent over as much as I can so that the release doesn't come off. If, if I'm pulling the release off, it's too much, okay? But you need a good rod. So I'm using this Akuma Guide Select Classic. Now, I'm running 10 and a half foot rods. I'm pretty certain that most of you guys that are either getting into it or you're fishing this, you don't need to use 10 and a half foot rods. Okay, really, what, what drives the choice for the length of rod when you're downrigger fishing? What do you think? Uh, a little of it, yes. What else? the size of your boat, exactly, and the layout of your boat. So if you're running a Uniflight Salty Dog, right, and you've just got a kicker back there, but you don't have any screws or outboard motors in the back, you run nine foot rods. That'll give you plenty of leverage to fight those fish and to net. I'm running a 30 foot Grady White with two out, outboards, right? We know what Coho like to do when they get close to the boat, they shoot over here and shoot over there. So I need that 10 and a half foot length so we can negotiate the outboards. 
So that's exactly what drives your decision on the length. Yes, I think that a longer rod provides more control over that fish. But keep in mind, you do have to back up to a point so that someone can net it. Or if you are one of those anglers who fish by yourself and you're doing the, I've seen it all the time, the one hand net job while you're fighting, you definitely want a shorter rod, right? Okay, uh, I'm using uh, an Akuma Solterra reel. It, this is a lever drag reel. If you're unfamiliar with lever drags, take a look at it, check them out. Um, I'm pretty certain that Akuma has one of their Solteras at their booth here um, this weekend. Uh, there are other lever drag reels. Shimano has the Charter Special. Um, I just prefer the lever drag over the star drag. Is one better than the other? No, really and truly, most people who get in my boat have never seen a lever drag, so they don't screw up the drag because they don't know how to adjust it, right? I get people in my boat all the time when I'm using star drag reels, and next thing I know, they're over there tightening and loosening, and we've lost fish that way, right? So the lever drag really keeps my clients from messing around with the reels. So that's why I use that. Okay, here's a big one, line. I'm using a 65 pound braid. Now I do back spool my reels with some mono, okay? And I put on, I only need as much braid as I'm actually gonna put out in the water and fish. So I don't need to burn a bunch of braid on my reels. Um, these Solteras are pretty big reels, so I put about a third of the way with some mono on there just to take up some space. I put my, my braid on. Now I'm not clipping into braid, I'm clipping into fluorocarbon. I put a top shot of fluorocarbon on my braid, okay? I'm using 30 pound. I found that the 30 pound, if I use a modified Albright knot, the knot size is just right. I have no issues going through the guides, okay? I don't have to change out my braid very often. I mean, I'll go six, seven years before I change the braid out. It just, you're not gonna go through it. I change the top shot out several times a year. Yes, sir. So here's, I also like to fish with plugs. So I like to be able to get out to about 60 feet. So I always put in 65 feet of top shot, okay? That way, if I'm pulling plugs, I wanna get out there 55, 60 feet, I've only got about five feet left before it's at the knot. That way I'm not clipping in with braid. Clipping in with braid is a bad idea. And I've seen some guys do it, they twist it up and stick it in there. I like to know that I'm in the clip, right? So six, 60, 65 feet. And now if you're not gonna be fishing plugs and you don't need that kind of room for those plugs to move, you can put 30 feet on there. Doesn't really matter, right? Yes, modified Albright. There's tons of videos on YouTube about that. Modified Albright. Anything else on the top shot braid thing? No? I think that braid just goes through the water so much better. Because the fluorocarbon, you know, even if I say, say for instance, I have a 25 foot setback, I've only got a little bit of the fluorocarbon in the water on drag. Um, the braid just makes it easier. I usually don't get caught up on weeds and stuff like that. It just slices through everything. Okay, terminal tackle. So what I'm using, and I'm not using anything special. I know this will break your heart. I'm not running Sampo's stainless steel. I, I don't get fancy. My gear gets cut every day. It goes in the garbage. I put new stuff on the next day. I just, I go through too much gear. And it, there's not saying there's anything wrong with that. If you want to run the stainless steel, but listen, you still have to clean that stuff. You still got to keep it clean because I've seen stainless corrode too. And I've seen guys lose fish because stainless steel barrel swivel broke on them. I guarantee it broke because of corrosion, right? Just, it, it happens, it happens. So I'm using size seven on my barrel swivels. For my, my hooks, I use a three-aught and a four-aught. And I'm using a Matsuo barbless hook for my hoochies. These hooks, I, I buy them off eBay. I buy, whenever I find them, I buy a bunch of them. 
Uh, they are literally the sharpest hook I've ever used for salmon fishing. It's just scary sharp. Um, I, it's, they're amazing. If you get your hands on some, try them out. You, you'll be impressed too. Sure, we all know who Mike Jamboretz is, Jambo, right? Legend in, in coastal salmon fishing. I showed him these hooks and he goes, holy Christ, that's a sharp hook. He goes, I've never seen anything that sharp. So if it comes from Jambo, you can trust it. Okay, 30 pound green monofilament for all my spoons and hoochies. I'm not, I'm not using fluorocarbon for my hoochies, just not. I'm not using it for the spoons either. And I'm not noticing that we're not catching fish when other, other people are. I'm just, I use the fluorocarbon for the top shot and that's it. I mean, look at the water in Puget Sound. And most of the time we're fishing at a depth, we're not getting enough light down there anyway that they're seeing that stuff. It's not spooking them, okay? I like the fluorocarbon for the top shot because it's a stiffer line. That's really all it comes down to. Okay, I do use the clear mono, 30 pound clear mono for cut plug herring, okay? It's just how I've been used to tying them up. Uh, I don't run a ton of cut plug. Um, I've got a couple buddies, they love running the cut plug herring. They use fluorocarbon and they're very successful doing it but they like a little more stiff action on the line so that that spin is nice and tight, okay? Any hooks that I have to change on my plugs or anything like that, I'm using the Mustad Salmon Sigh Wash. Um, and I'm changing the my, my hooks out on my plugs and my spoons a lot. Do I do it every single day? No, but I probably do it every three days. I just check that tip and when that tip's not sticking to my thumbnail, I, I just cut it, change them out, right? And make sure you're pinching those barbs. Okay. You gotta have downriggers. Can you go, I mean, if you wanna go out there and mooch, great. I'm not a moocher. Um, I wouldn't even pretend to be able to even tell you how to do that. I think the most effective way is to fish with downriggers. I mean, I, I've got buddies that they are mooching captains. And, you know, they're out there getting tossed around and we're going right past them and hooking up fish. And they're still out there getting tossed around. And some days they strike, some days they're, they're the king of the hill. Um, but I think that trolling for coho will be your most productive, okay? Because it, it also appears to me that everywhere I go, the people that are mooching are all crowded on top of each other, right? At least with trolling, you can get right past them and be on your way. I'm using the Canon Optimum with the dual axis rod holders. Because a lot of people see my rod holders and they're like, holy mo, where'd you get those? Canon makes this product. And so I really uh, like these downrigger holders or the rod holders because they, they are integrated at the base of my downriggers and they're fully adjustable. What's really great is in my boat, when you grab that rod, you don't have to push out like this to lift the rod. You just pull back. The whole thing goes click, 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 click. And then you lift straight up. So you never lean over the side of the boat. You stay inside the boat. Once I show people how that works, they're like, this is great. I don't feel like I'm gonna fall out of the boat anymore. I also run a Fishhawks X4D. If you have not seen the Fishhawk technology, it is amazing. It's a probe that goes just above your downrigger ball. It sends a signal up to a separate transducer that is mounted on your boat, and it talks wirelessly to your Canon downriggers, your Optimum downriggers. I can get true temperature at depth that I'm fishing, which I think is the most critical piece of the information that I collect constantly throughout the year, because now I know what temperature these fish are more active, right? Because we all will mark fish, and you'll go by and you're like, oh, why didn't we get a fish? Well, let's check the temperature in some of the other parts of the water, right? So I get temperature, I get true depth of the ball, and just that type of information, there's no more guessing, well, I'm going this fast, my angle's this, so I'm probably only this deep. Nope, Fishhawk tells you exactly how deep your downrigger is. 
So I run that. Now, here's probably something that I do, you guys don't do. My downrigger clips, they all get cut and I put on seven foot downrigger leads on my, on my snaps, right? I want to stay in the boat. I've had to rescue somebody who fell out of their boat, they were fishing by themselves, and their boat's doing circles out around Camino, and they're like floating the other way because of the tide. Um, and lo and behold, just trying to get a hold of that downrigger. So number one, and I'll just share this with you, it's, I think it's more of a safety thing, okay? Once the downrigger balls go in the water on my boat, the downrigger balls always stay in the water. They don't come out. You take a downrigger ball out of the water, what's the boat want to do? It wants to make a turn, right? To the direction that other ball's in the water. I leave the downrigger balls in the water. I have a retro ease on my downrigger. It's this line right here. See that line? I just pull on it, it pulls the wire to me. And as it pulls it to me, I just grab my downrigger clip. I let that back down, the downrigger ball stays in the water. Now I'm able to clip in, do what I need to do. That's it, okay? And I actually have on my YouTube channel, I have video of that setup if you want more information about that. I do run the Canon cable on my Canon downriggers. I do think <clears throat> there is a difference in downrigger cable. So on my previous brand downrigger, it is the next day is the Lake Stevens Kokanee Derby, right? And I go to my, I'm like, you know, I should just take a look at my line, my downrigger line. So I started pulling it out and I got about 10 feet from the boat and it snapped off and it snapped off. This is downrigger cable that was put on not 12 months before. And that downrigger cable is just snapping and snapping. And those particular sets of downriggers, I never fished them in the salt water. They only got fished in fresh water for kokanee. And that cable just snapped. I've never had Canon cable do that to me. I don't know what it is that they have put on that coating that they put on there, but I've just never had that problem. Have I had strands break? Yes. But I've never had it corrode on me, okay? Um, can you run braid? Absolutely. If you want to run braid, go ahead. I like to take advantage of the positive ion control on the Canon Optimum downriggers. So take that for what it's worth. 